Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luma video. I know it's been a while, but I am here to share with you some of the sauce that I've been keeping all to myself. Let's get right into it. First of all, we're gonna learn about Patcher. Patcher is one of the most useful plugins in FL Studio and you may not even know that it exists. I'm gonna show you how to get to it. Press here, uh, in your case, probably more plugins and search up Patcher. When you open it up, you might be kind of confused. There's nothing here. You can also use it as an effect. But as you can see, it looks the same. It's because you can program it to do whatever you'd like. And that's what makes it so versatile and so useful. So first of all, let me show you some applications of the patcher, and then I'm gonna show you how to use it. This is what I have, sidechain. You can see it's just one knob here, but it does more than one thing. If I go to the map, which is the second option here, I can look at the different things inside this patcher. And you notice that they're all effects, or most of them are effects. Some of them are calculations like this, which just inverts. And then we have some plugins here. This one is side chaining from an input and then ring modulating. That's how you might want to get some beefy kicks in there with your side chain. And then I also have a balance here, more classical side chaining techniques. Uh, and then all of that goes out to FL Studio. So so this may look a little bit complicated, uh, and if you don't quite understand what's going on here, don't worry, that's what this video is for, is to kind of teach you what's going on here and then how to make your own. Another one that I use quite often is Utility. This is the second version of Utility that I've made in Patcher, and this one is by far superior. Not because it has more options, it actually has quite a few less options, but I think the ones that it does have are very, very special. So let me bring in a song here, and I can show you kind of how to use this. Okay, so here we have a track, and it seems like it needs some compression on here, but I don't have a compressor. I do have a utility though, and if I enable soft clipper and increase the in volume, I can get kind of a compression effect from the soft clipper, um, and this is really useful. I always have this on my master chain. In fact, on my default preset, it's always on my master. This is seriously one of my favorite plugins that I use. Soft clipper, soft clips things that are loud. You can change the uh, volume in to soft clip things harder, and then you can change the volume out. Next up, we have hard clipper, which does the same thing, except hard clips it. I prefer soft clipper, and you can have them both enabled at the same time. So these two options over here control the stereo field, and it's a little bit different than controlling the stereo field using uh, this knob here, because this knob here is a single value that changes in between, separated and merged. There are some limitations with that. Sometimes you want to only increase the sound of the stereo and not the mono or vice versa, and that's not really available with a singular knob. So this fixes that problem by adding two different sliders. One controls the stereo gain, and one controls the mono gain. So if I turn this all the way down, our song is completely in mono. And if we look at this utility here, we can see this straight line resembles a mono signal. And we can do the opposite, and now we have a horizontal line, and we're only hearing the stereo. Neither of these on their own sound good, but when combined, you can really experiment with your stereo field and find something that fits really nice inside your mix. This is a huge tool that I use all the time. Next we have mono, which uh, you might be wondering, well, you know, why would I have mono if I can just do this? Well, there's two different types of mono. I'll explain. One of them is left to mono, so it takes the left channel and makes it mono, which is what this button does. And then there's the other type of mono, which merges the stereo. So one of them you'll get phasing, one of them you won't. One of them you'll preserve the right channel's gain. The other one you basically get rid of the, the other channel's gain and then multiply that gain by essentially the value that would make it day level. And then last but not least, we have LPHP, which stands for low pass, high pass. When enabled, it'll just do a 20 to 20K Hertz cut, which is really nice for mastering. Um, personally, I always use that for mastering. Before basically going into any effects, I like to have a clean mix. So LPHP I use very frequently. So that's why it's built into this plugin. On top of that, we have sliders for the low pass and high pass. This was all made in Patcher, and that's what makes Patcher such a great plugin. If I go over to the map here, you can see it looks a little bit spaghetti. It does a little weird reformatting thing. 
Other than that, everything works perfectly. And if you look at the signal route here, you can kind of start to understand how it's working. Each one of these bypasses is a patcher in itself. So you can have a patcher inside a patcher. And essentially what it does, it takes a attenuator and then multiplies it in order to create basically a toggle on or off. And then that goes into a mix. So right now we have the dry mix at zero and the wet mix at full. And if we look at where that's coming from, it's coming from low pass, high pass and the low pass high pass is enabled, so that makes sense. Next is going into a soft clipper, which is then going into a bypass, which does the same thing, and so on and so forth until we get to the end. Now there's a few different things that we have here that are interesting. We have a left to mono, which is a patcher as well, and then we have fruity stereo shaper. Fruity stereo shaper has a big role in this because it's used to make the left to mono, and it is also used to make a mid side attenuator. Now if you've ever programmed, this is gonna make a lot of sense. This is a, a style called visual programming because you're essentially doing something very similar but this way you're using a visual interface rather than writing code. If you are looking to get into coding, then honestly you might want to start with visual coding because it kind of teaches you what you need to learn. Creating smaller programs that do simple things and then using them to make bigger programs that do more complicated tasks. Similar to the game Factorio, if you've ever played Factorio. Earlier in the video, I showed you an example using this monitor here. So this is what mini meters looks like, and you can see it's very similar. However, one costs $10 and one of them is free. A caveat that you must be following my Patreon, unless you want to make it yourself, which is not too difficult. So let's go over and look at it. It's a patcher that's routed into a bunch of Wave Candies. Wave Candy is a built-in plugin on FL Studio that allows you to make visuals. So let's build a patcher preset. I kind of want to add some patcher preset that allows me to easily compress things. Let's start off with opening a new patcher. So we can go to more plugins and then look up patcher, or we can click the star here and then go to patcher straight from our drop down here. Now that we have it open, we're going to be on the map first. Also go to the surface, but you notice that both of them are empty. We can start by adding a plugin. Since we are adding a compressor, I think we should start with the fruity compressor just to make it easy on us. Now you can see that it automatically links the two together from FL Studio, which is the audio in. So anything that is before this is going to the compressor. The compressor is compressing and then sending the audio out of FL Studio. So you can see that the values are inside here. Now I'm not too worried about the type, so we can just leave that at hard. But the threshold, ratio, gain, attack, and release are definitely things that we want to be able to change. What we can do here is activate them. And now you can see this made a little red dot. This red dot is the node that we're gonna use to connect one thing to control that. And the thing we're going to connect is a knob, kind of like this one. So if we go to knob, we can pick a stylized knob if we would like. You'll notice that the threshold here is staying put. It's not being changed with the knob, and that's because we haven't connected the two. So we can grab this node and then drag the wire to the other node, and now they are connected. So you can see when I turn this knob over here, this knob also gets turned. And to make things easier, let's go back into edit mode and rename it and change it to threshold. So now we know which one this is controlling. So let's move on to ratio. Let's activate it and then duplicate this and then go back over to patcher and repeat the process. So now we have them all labeled and they're all attached to, to the knobs that we'd like, but they're kind of not level and they look Kind of bad, so let's fix that. We can go to the grid and enable it by clicking one of these options. I'm gonna go with 50 pixels, uh, and you can see these fit nicely into there, and I think that looks good. Now we have this, but we don't really have a background. We can add that by going to bevel and then clicking default. We can then use this bevel to drag it out and create a background. You can also change the color here, and if you don't like the default colors that they give you here, you can always unlock it and access all the colors. You can use the hex decimal here for the specific colors. Personally, I like white as the background because I think it just looks clean. So these knobs, as I mentioned, are all customizable. So what we can do to actually change what these knobs look like is go over to colors and then we can change the color of each individual parameter. But that's a little tedious if you want to make a lot of changes. What you can do instead is go to control creator and you can go over here and then make a knob based on one of the presets. Let's pick this one. I don't like how this one changes into a three pronged knob. So we can change that by going into dent 
count, gap, and size to change kind of what our knob looks like. I'm not going to make too many changes just for the purpose of this video. That kind of got rid of the text here. What we can do is actually add text by going to label default. Then we can change the color and font color to black. We go over here, then we can duplicate this. Now we can easily see what these knobs do. Let's use it. We can use it on the master here. Okay, let's move the threshold all the way up so we really get that compression effect. Change the ratio. Let's change the outgain here. Now you can really tell a difference when we enable and disable the patcher. One thing that I wanna do though is change this gain because I noticed when I was editing the volume, it was clipping when I got to 30 dB, and I don't want it to ever go to 30 dB. What I can do is actually change the value that we input. So by turning this knob, you can see this follows it one to one. But this one, since I don't want it to go to 30 and I want it to cap out instead at 10 dB, we can just multiply the value of this knob by one third. I've turned gain off here. It's not controlling compressor anymore. So what I can do to change the value of that knob is by going into your plugin picker, going to more, I'm looking up formula controller. Fruity formula controller is a plugin that allows you to take an input and then do some transformation to it and then output a number. You can use the presets here to get uh, the equations that you want. So this is mapping and you can see that there's a few presets in here that are really useful. We have input switcher, invert, which will invert the signal, limiter, which will limit the signal, multiply and add, which is the one we're gonna use, range, step, increment, and tension. Now that we have multiply and add open, we wanna first multiply it by one third. So we can do one divided by three here, and then for the addition, we're gonna to wanna to compensate for the amount that it divides it by. At this point, if we turn it, we can look at the compressor, and you can see that the gain will go from negative 30 to negative 10. That's not what we want. We want it to go from negative 10 to positive 10. So we're gonna to have to compensate by adding a number here. And that number, I believe, should be 20. But since these numbers are all from 0 to 1, then we're going to have to do a ratio. So since it goes from 30, I think it will be add 1 third. Yes, there we go. OK, now you can see that the value will go between negative 10 and 10, which is what we want. Fruity formula controller, very useful. Another controller that is built in here that you can use outside of Patcher is peak controller. Peak controller will take an input and then essentially create an automation out of it. So if I go to outputs here and then controllers, I can do peak and that will control something. So if I want, for example, the threshold to be based on the audio that's coming in, then I can do that by taking this threshold and then taking a, a side chain from FL Studio. And now when we play something in, we can see based on the volume of this loop here, threshold is changing. If we want to do the opposite, we can actually invert that signal. And to invert that signal, we would once again bring up formula controller, and then we can drag this onto a parameter, and then we want to disconnect this one, and then we want to put an output onto here. Sometimes you'll see these plugins that don't have any default inputs and outputs, and to add them, you go into here. Uh, parameters will always be values, audio, then that'll be audio. And you, you can see the difference between parameters and audio based on these noodles here. These noodles are either orange or red. Orange means audio, red means value. So that is kind of the fundamental idea of making a patcher preset. This one isn't too useful on its own. There's also a bunch of default presets here for patcher. One really good one is Resonator. I showed a tutorial on how to use Resonator in my color base video. So if you're interested in that, that video is kind of old, but you can check it out and it's all built in here. So there's a lot of utility in here that can be accessed just by using Patcher. I think that kind of does it for this video. I know there wasn't very much music in this video. This is more of just an informative, like how to use Patcher video. If you want to see a certain type of plugin being made, let me know in the comment section below. The plugins that I showed you, like the Mini Meters Alternative, Utility, and even the FL Studio preset that I use are now available on my Patreon, uh, along with a sample pack that I've been uh, curating over the past couple of weeks by recording vintage and, and modern synthesizers at Patchworks, which is the synthesizer store I work at. So right now there's over a thousand samples and you can buy them for $35. I have a free demo one called AX80. Uh, it's the one made with this synthesizer right here, actually, which is the AX80. <laughs> So 
So yeah, I'm gonna make a full video on this sample pack in the future, but if you're interested and want them right now, then you can go ahead and do that. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.